Hello, this is David Birch at Star Path School of Navigation in Seattle with a note about a Macintosh app that has a lot of value for just plain graphics and computer use on your Macintosh computer, but I want to focus on the great value it has for doing uh, navigation. And uh, that app is called Pixel Stick, and you can go, you can find that here. Uh, the trick here is you, you, if you type Pixel Stick like that, you don't get it. It comes up a bunch of other things. But if you punch app in there, you, you can uh, go to it, and that's the company that makes it. And the um, $7, it costs $7. However, um, I, uh, you can run it, download it and run it, and see, be sure you like it before you purchase it. But I think, I think you're going to like it. It's a really powerful tool, and I'd recommend supporting the folks that made this. So that's what we're going to talk about. When you install it, uh, let's see, actually, I wanted to first look at some weather map here. So let's look at the example now for a weather map. And I'll just say, here's the pixel stick. And it, when you install it, uh, or it actually doesn't install. It just runs from the app that you download. And so it's brought up here. This, this is the icon. Then you can, you can then uh, store that on your uh, taskbar down here. And it brings up this tool here, which has three, um, three handles and these uh, guidelines. And what it's going to do is measure the distance between these two outer ones, between that one and that one, in either pixels. If you don't do anything, it's just plain pixels. But that's uh, on a Mac, we can always do something like, uh, what, Command-Shift-4. See, we can measure pixels that way. See that? That measures pixels. But um, this goes way beyond that um, because it's measuring the distance along this line, and we can scale it and make any kind of units we want and also measure angles. And recently, and I, and I, I congratulate them, they made a change to it recently uh, so that it will measure angles like a navigator might. And that up here in the pixel stick up in the top under edit is called map mode. So we're going to always use map mode on this because when you measure map mode, then this is the base, this zero here. Let me put it over here. And um, you, can, you can change the colors of these, which is helpful for some backgrounds. Um, it, this is uh, measuring the angle. Right now, it's measuring vertical. We're going to show another powerful feature of it. Right now, it's measuring vertical, and the angle's over here, 360 degrees or something like that. Then as you, as you turn this, there would be something like 45, actually 54, and then around to 90, 180, and see, now we're 232, and so on. So it measures angles like you would on a on a chart uh, relative to the baseline, which we've set here at uh, straight up as north. Now, I'll do uh, and then. Okay, so how do you calibrate it? Um, what one? Th so what you do is you have to have some kind of reference on your picture. And here we have a we have the latitude and longitude lines um, on here. Um, Notice this moves this one up and down. If I grab the middle one, it moves everything. So you can sort of set it up that way. But I'll just set the bottom here on this line, which is 30 north, and bring the top down here to uh, 40 north. Now, looking at these things, looking at the grids, you see you can set it up very precisely. I mean, if you're off, rotated or something. So you just line those up like that. So that distance from here to here is either 600 miles, 10 degrees, 600 miles, or what I'm going to do for now is just call that 10 degrees. And because in our marine weather course, we in our book, Modern Marine Weather, we teach how to interpret weather maps reading the isobar spacings in terms of latitude degrees. So in this case, we would call that 10 and then just directly measure distances in degrees. Later, we'll go to nautical miles. So here, you would then come over here, custom, you can give things names and read about it and play with it, but here you just hit edit. Now this is going to be in degrees, 
So I'll just put degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. And here, now here's where you put the distance of the setting between them right now. And that's going to be 10.0. And here is a crucial thing that took me the longest time to learn. You cannot type in 10 and click OK. You've got to have, while this is sitting here, you must hit the Enter key. That's a key point. So now this is 10 degrees. So if we come back, so it's set now. So if we bring this back down here to like, this is, uh, this is like one, two, three, that should be three degrees, something like three, 2.93 or something like that. You can, now if you zoom in on the picture and change the scale, so you have to be careful here. If you zoom in on the picture and change the scale, then you have to come back and change this because this is just literally reading what's on the scale. But so there's your there's your distance. So now we can do things like I let's say I want to know the, the the spacing between these isobars right here. That would be like this 1016 and the 1020. And I can just come up here and read that directly off of here. And that would be um, that would be 1.96 or 2, 2 degrees. And that's what you'd use to go into our table uh, to read uh, wind speeds. And you'd also have to know the latitude. This is up about 30. Well, you could even, you could even be precise about that. It's 2 degrees, and, it's at latitude, and the point you're talking about looks like it's at about latitude um, 34, 34.3. So that works. So if you want... Uh, uh, that and if you want to know, let's see. This is a uh, high up here. Let me just see. Yeah, 28, 27, 20 high. So these winds are coming around this high this way and coming out of the isobar. So if you want to know the wind direction in this region, you see this is the orientation of the isobar, something like that. The isobar is pointed towards about uh, 043. But these are going to cross the wind like that. So the wind in this region here, even though it doesn't not marked here, I can use that two degree spacing I measure here, go into our table that's in our book, find out what the wind speed is, and then we look in the wind speed, the wind direction. Oops, it's got to be backwards. Hello. I got to do it the other way around because we're always telling which way the wind goes. So just turn it around like that, and you see. So the wind direction would be about, um, well, oh no, well, I had it right the first time. Oh, I'm pointing in the direction the wind is coming from. Yeah, that's correct, that's correct. So if I, like, there's the isobar, it's got to go across the isobar, so something like that. So the wind direction is uh, uh, Something like, oh, you know, here's zero. And so it, it would be anywhere between zero to just a few degrees this way would be the, the wind direction you'd expect here. And so forth. So that's how that works with weather maps. You can play with it. Now let's go to, um, oh, okay, another thing you could do. I'll close this. Let's say you go to an area and capture, capture a Google Earth picture. And here, see, by the way, when you're working, this is always on top. And when you're working down here, you've got your regular picture. And to get the focus back here, you just click this. And now you're dealing with these guys again. So uh, so there you have uh, this a map you captured. And now when you capture from Google Earth, you want to be sure you're pointing north. And that means always the last thing you do before capturing is click that button end button a couple t now I'm not I'm I've already got the captured picture but here you click this in a couple times to be sure you're due north so this is north in this picture and if you wanted to know just headings you're like at the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge and you come over the just uh, let's see um, just right down here south tip of there you're just that angle which you read right here 92 degrees Coming up this way, you read the, the angles. Now, um, so you can read angles off of here. And you, but you'd have to, if you want to do distances, you'd have to scale this picture somehow. So, and Google Earth brings this up here in nautical, I mean in statute miles, but again, if you wanted to do it, you would bring that down here and then come over here and set this here. And then back here, you would make this, uh, make this uh, here. Now we're going to go in my, this is now statute miles, or just, just miles. 
and then this is going to be 2.32, 2.32, enter, enter. So that's 2.32 miles. And now you can then measure dis then you can measure distances uh, from here on into Treasure Treasure Island here, something like this. So that you could do that. Now, if you don't have, by the way, I'll just take a little slight tangent. If you want, like this says, what's what's the length of Treasure Island here in uh, in uh, statute miles? It's like 1.13 statute miles, like that. If you, uh, but that's statute miles. The nautical miles will be a little less. And I'll just show you one quick divergent here. If you want to look at nautical charts online or to find out what that really is, for example, in nautical miles, then just go up here. This is a, we have a, I have a video on here somewhere about this. This is a NOAA ENC online, NOAA ENC online viewer. It views the vector charts online and you can, you can literally just go in here and type Treasure Island and it'll find it and bring you right to this chart. Then you can come down here and use their tool. See, they have a measurement tool. Click here, measurement, undefined. There's two of these. This one doesn't work at all. This is the one you want. And then you can go measure this here to here. And you see in nautical miles is about 0.9. 0.91 nautical miles. So that's a. It's always good. To remember to play with this. Uh, play with this online um, ENC online viewer at some point. So that's. So then with that. So then you, if you wanted to, you knew that you could actually come back and change this. Change this to nautical miles. For your. Uh, if you're. Well, I'm not saving these. I'm not saving these. So it doesn't really matter at all. And you, this is 0 0.90. Say and then enter. Now you're measuring everything on the chart in nautical miles. Okay, so that, I'll stop this. So, so that's how you can do with that, a wonderful tool for that. Now let's come back to, um, where do I, have? oh, okay, so here's, now I'm not sure how, how many people realize it, but NOAA makes a wonderful set of uh, PDFs. Every chart they make is a PDF chart, as you can download as a high-res PDF. Here is one for San Francisco, which is unusual. It's a folio chart, so it's not like a normal chart, but it just shows a whole a bunch of sections of little charts. And you can have this in your computer, or you know, and uh, as a as a backup to the real nautical charts. You can download, of course, all the nautical charts. But those, if you have the those, you have to have a real chart viewer. Here, you don't have to have a chart viewer. You can actually just view these charts in your uh, in a, in a tablet or in your computer, or email this to your phone, and so on. But uh, once you're on this, then you don't uh, have a way. Uh, uh, these are tilted, so some chart programs will let you tilt things and some won't. And by tilted, I mean here, let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, let's look here. So now look, north on this one is like this, like here. So here, here's the way Pixel Stick handles that. Just grab this and go up here and align this with the direction you want to be north, which is going to be something right like that. Now that's our new north right there which is actually tilted over 13 degrees. Because these folio charts, every single picture will have north oriented a different way. They just laid it out to fit on the chart. So then you would uh, get the ax get the focus here, then go up to pixel, oh, actually, I think you can click here. Yeah, that's the settings. Then, uh, well, settings is not what we want here, okay. So you have to go up to edit, edit, and then set the base, set baseline right there, set the baseline. And that's all there is to it. Now you see this is zero, or is it, yeah, zero. And now we're going along here. This is now uh, angle 169, that's not right. What am I doing wrong here? Uh, that's the angle. Let me go up here, edit map mode, set baseline, and that should be zero. 
and the angle. Oh, I'm reading the wrong thing. Here's the angle here. There, this reads out many parameters, and you just have to play with it and see everything it's reading out. In fact, you can click this button here and then read the pixel colors off the background if you want to know that for building a web page or something. But anyway, so here it is. That was working right. I just read it wrong. Here's the angle. You see that's about five degrees and so forth. So there's something like that. And again, on this one, so there's a way now we're measuring true bearings on this chart, which has a skewed axis. And again, you'd have to set the scale. And for to set the scale, you might have to zoom in and figure out how many miles these are. They look like it's about five Actually, I can't tell exactly. So you have to zoom in, zoom in uh, for the moment to figure out what the scale is. Uh, okay, I zoom in again. So you zoom in and put somewhere on the chart, read what the scale is. Okay, so that's 52, and that's 50. So these lines, these parallels on this chart here, are two miles apart. So it doesn't matter what scale I'm on. I would have to then just set this, uh, set this here, come down to here, come over to here, like, um, well, I don't have to be right on that, since I've got those good, uh, I can set that right there, and right here. So this is now two nautical miles. So you go in here, whoops, closed, close it, 2.0. Then hit the inner right then, 2.0. Now you've got uh, that. That's 2.0 nautical miles. So now you've got a tool that's reading range and bearing on a chart like that. Okay, so that's the tool, pixel tool. Uh, no, pixel stick. I um, uh, Try it out. I think you'll like it. And um, I hope you can support these guys who made a really nice app.